Well, friends, it's the day after our provincial exorcism. Rachel Notley is no longer premier. And the lesson we should learn from all of this is that egregious attacks and malicious libel from the left only worked on conservatives when conservatives let it work. It is the blissful day after Alberta's provincial election campaign. Four years of socialist tyranny, attacks on Christians, families, farmers, freedom, fun, and the oil patch came to a crashing halt last night. As I'm recording this video, Jason Kenney's United Conservative Party holds 63 seats in the legislature and Rachel Notley's NDP holds just 24. The NDP were prosecuted for their misdeeds at the ballot box by Albertans. Now, over the next few days, some of those results could change as nearly 700,000 advanced votes need to be counted. But either way, Jason Kenney is Premier-designate. And it's time for the great undoing to begin. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this campaign. This was one of the most divisive, malicious, hateful campaigns I've ever seen in Canadian politics. I say it all the time, but the loving and so-called tolerant NDP and their professional proxies at the Broadbent and Loblaws funded press progress were so panicked and so out of their minds at the likelihood of the sewer rats and the deplorables taking their province back that they have been calling anybody to the right of Stalin, a fascist, among other things. Today, I think we should take a look at the efficacy of those smear and character assassination campaigns, because if you got all your news in the mainstream media, you wouldn't really know just how well those attacks worked, because they failed, and they failed really badly. Let's start with the press progress attacks on a Nigerian immigrant conservative candidate named Casey Maydew. Maydew had the gall to pose beside one of my beautiful StopNotly.com lawn signs in an Instagram photo. And for that, Maydew was called a white supremacist of all things. And how'd that work out for press progress? Well, last night, Maydew became the only UCP winner to breach the walls of the socialist fortress of Edmonton. He's a blue oasis in a sea of orange, and I predict he will be in Jason Kenney's very first cabinet. Now let's move on to Jason Nixon in Rocky Mountain House. Press Progress has accused Nixon of being a misogynist because he did lose a human rights tribunal case and ultimately paid a fine to a woman he fired years ago. And Press Progress also linked back to a now discredited story about Jason Nixon assaulting a resident of Cremona. Nixon took his home riding with nearly 82% of the vote. Now let's take a look at one of my favorites out there, Devin Dreeshin. He's been attacked for working on the Trump campaign and even having the audacity to wear a Make America Great Again hat while in America working to make it great again. He's actually, you know, my kind of kid. Dreeshin took his seat with 74.3% of the vote. Now let's head over to Drayton Valley Devin to take a look at Mark Smith. He was accused by Press Progress of equating homosexual love to pedophilia while he was in his church, an allegation he strongly denies. Smith took the riding with 71% of the vote and the NDP barely cracked 17 because, as you know, Albertans don't care what you say or do in your church. Drayton Valley is a ghost town and those people need jobs and really, that's all that matters. Okay, one last one. Let's talk about Grant Hunter. Hunter has been accused of using Nazi-like language for a clumsily worded letter to the editor from way back in 2010. The Press Progress article that attacks him is critical of him for asserting that God and family are the bedrock principles of society. Grant Hunter took Tabor Warner with 78.4% of the vote. These character assassinations of these decent people have failed. But here's the thing. Failed or not, these attacks aren't going to stop. Actually, I guarantee you with some degree of certainty the attacks on conservatives are probably only going to get worse. Just look at the American loonies who two years out are still saying that Donald Trump isn't their president, that he's illegitimate. Then there are the British left-wing elites who are still denying the legitimacy of the Brexit vote. And then there are all the fancy people who just couldn't foresee a Doug Ford win in Ontario and now they refuse to acknowledge his successes for the people. 
The victory of Donald Trump, the victory of Jason Kenney, the victory of the Brexit vote, and of course the victory of Doug Ford in Ontario are just the consequences of normal people getting fed up and finally tuning out the elites who constantly tell them that they need to care about all the things that only matter to elites. The increased name-calling, the lunacy, the violence, the character assassination and casual anti-Christian bigotry from the left only hardened conservatives' resolve to vote against the left because the left made it personal when it was only about politics for us. Just like when Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters deplorables and Rachel Notley's deputy premier Sarah Hoffman called us all a bunch of sewer rats, if the left keeps this up, we're going to have Jason Kenney as a premier for a very, very long time. But in all of this, I have a second and maybe more important point to make because unlike the out-of-control behavior of the left, this is the point that the right can control. Jason Kenney didn't have to sacrifice his controversial candidates, Kaylin Ford and Eva Kiriakos, once they ran afoul of the likes of Press Progress and the mainstream media left. Jason Kenney should have trusted conservative voters to see right through these attacks the very same way they obviously did in all those other ridings I just told you about. You see, those attacks only worked when Jason Kenney let them work. And I hope that's a lesson the conservative movement learned last night. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. The election is all over, but the NDP crying and the NDP firing. But if you want to learn how we got here and why we needed to get rid of Notley, you can get my new book. It's called Stop Notley, and in it, I made the case for throwing out the NDP. You can get that book today at stopnotly.com.